Synapse from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia at www.wikipedia.org. Synapses are specialized junctions through which cells of the nervous system signal to one another and to non-neuronal cells such as muscles or glands. Synapses form the circuits in which the neurons of the central nervous system interconnect. They are less crucial to the biological computations that underlie perception and thought. They also provide the means through which the nervous system connects to and controls the other systems of the body. The word synapse comes from synaptine, which Sir Charles Scott Sherrington and his colleagues coined from the Greek sign meaning together and haptine meaning to clasp. Anatomy At a prototypical synapse such as a dendritic spine, a mushroom-shaped bud projects from each of the two cells and the casps of these buds press fat against one another. At this interface, the membranes of the two cells flank each other across a slender gap, the narrowness of which enables signaling molecules known as neurotransmitters to pass rapidly from one cell to the other by diffusion. This gap is sometimes known as the synaptic cleft. Such synapses are asymmetric both in structure and in how they operate. Only the so-called presynaptic neuron secretes a neurotransmitter, which binds the receptors facing into the synapse from the postsynaptic cell. The presynaptic nerve terminal, also called the synaptic button, generally buds from the tip of an axon, while the postsynaptic target surface typically appears on a dendrite, a cell body, or another part of the cell. The parts of synapses where neurotransmitter is released are called the active zones. As active zones, the membranes of the two adjacent cells are held in close contact by cell adhesion proteins. Signaling across chemical synapses the release of neurotransmitter is triggered by the arrival of the nerve impulse or action potential and occurs through an unusually rapid process of cellular secretion. Within the presynaptic nerve terminal, vesicles containing neurotransmitter sit docked and ready at the synaptic membrane. The arrived action potential produces an influx of calcium ions through voltage-dependent calcium-selective ion channels, at which point the vesicles fuse with the membrane and release the contents to the outside. Receptors on the opposite side of the synaptic gap bind to neurotransmitter molecules and respond by opening nearby ion channels in the postsynaptic cell membrane, causing ions to rush in or out and changing the local transmembrane potential of the cell. The result is excitatory in the case of depolarizing currents or inhibitory in the case of hyperpolarizing currents. Whether a synapse is excitatory or inhibitory depends on what types of ion channel conduct the postsynaptic current which in turn is a function of the type of receptors and neurotransmitter employed at the synapse. Synaptic strength. Synaptic strength is the amount of current, or, more strictly, the change in transmembrane potential of the synapse. It is subject to biological regulation. The variability of synaptic strength is often referred to as synaptic plasticity. One regulatory trigger of synaptic strength involves the simple coincident sensory stimuli and action potentials in the synaptically linked cells. Integration of synaptic inputs Generally, if an excitatory synapse is strong, an action potential in the presynaptic neuron will trigger another in the postsynaptic cell, whereas at a weak synapse, the excitatory postsynaptic potential will not reach the threshold for action potential initiation. In the brain, however, each neuron typically connects, or synapses, to many others, and likewise each receives synaptic inputs from many others. When action potentials fire simultaneously in several neurons that weakly synapse on a single cell, they may initiate an impulse in that cell, even though the synapses are weak. On the other hand, a presynaptic neuron releasing an inhibitory neurotransmitter, such as GABA, can cause inhibitory postsynaptic potential in the postsynaptic neuron, decreasing its excitability, and therefore decreasing the neuron's likelihood to fire an action potential. In this way, the output of the neuron may depend on the input of many others, each of which may have a different degree of influence depending on the strength of its synapse with that neuron. John Carew Eccles performed some of the important early experiments on synaptic integration, for which he received the Nobel Prize for Physiology or Medicine in 1963. Complex input-output relationships form the basis of transistor-based computations in computers, and so are thought to figure similarly in neural circuits. Detailed Properties and Regulation Following fusion of the synaptic vesicles and release of transmitter molecules into the synaptic cleft, the neurotransmitter is rapidly cleared from the space for recycling by specialised membrane proteins in the presynaptic or postsynaptic membrane. 
This reuptake prevents desensitization of the postsynaptic receptors, ensures that succeeding action potentials will elicit the same size excitatory postsynaptic potential. The necessity of reuptake and the phenomenon of desensitization in receptors and ion channels means that the strength of the synapse may in effect diminish as the train of action potentials arrive in rapid succession, a phenomenon that gives rise to the so-called frequency dependence of synapses. The nervous system exploits this property for computational purposes and apparently tunes its synapses through such means as phosphorylation of the proteins involved. The size, number and replenishment rate of these schools are also subject to regulation, as are many other elements of synaptic transmission. The drugs known as selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, or SSRIs, affect certain synapses by inhibiting the reuptake of the neurotransmitter serotonin. One important excitatory neurotransmitter, acetylcholine, does not undergo reuptake but instead is removed from the synapse by the action of the enzyme acetylcholine esterase. By analogy to true synapses described above, the interface between an antigen-presenting cell and a lymphocyte is sometimes called immunological synapse. References M. F. Baer, B. W. Connors and M. A. Paradiso, 2001 Neuroscience, Exploring the Brain Published by Lippincott in Baltimore Eric Candle, James Schwartz and Thomas Jessel, 2000 Principles of Neuroscience, 4th edition it's published by McGraw-Hill in New York. For further reading, see the category Nervous System. This article and a recording are released under the terms of the GNU Free Documentation License.